Hey everybody, how you doing? Teching and Barry here, and I hope you're ready for another One Piece Isekai Adventure Extravaganza! Oh yeah, did you enjoy your last foray into the One Piece world? Well that's awesome, because guess what? You're going back! <laughs> oh my god, I had so much fun making that last Isekai video. Most of it just came from the fact that I got to make a bunch of reference tables. I just love that, right? Two things in the world I love. I'm a very simple man. Geography, bunny girls, and making reference tables. Yep, and I got to make like five of them in the last video, so that was fantastic, okay? And many people, probably the first question is going to be, Teching, is there going to be a new reference table in this isekai video? Well, yes, there is certainly going to be. Worked on it last night, I'm mighty proud of it myself. Can't tell you what it's going to be quite yet. I'll wait until a little bit later into the video to reveal that. But I can tell you, it's a D100. <laughs> I know, right? Those are the best kind of reference tables. Man, when I make a new character in D&D, &D, my favorite part is not like rolling for stats or deciding what, you know, race or what class I'm going to be. It's getting to that little trinket table in the player's guide and I'm the player's handbook and I'm just like, ooh, I wonder what I'm gonna get. Ooh, an old rusty key! That's great! What does it open? And then every lock you get to in the game, it's just like, does this key open it? 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 And then the DM just gets mad and just like, yeah, you get robbed in the middle of the night and someone steals your key. I want to fight to the death to get that key back! You know, yes, that's, yes, that, that happens. It happens. It's D&D, &D, right? But no, something else that a lot of people might ask is, uh, the reason you're doing these, these isekai D&D &D videos teching, is that because of the whole rustage One Piece D&D? &D? And I have to say, that yeah that definitely played a pivotal role in me making these kind of videos so actually tonight we're going to be doing a new episode of one piece dnd &D over on rustage's twitch uh so i'll leave a link to that below it starts at 7 p.m eastern standard time or around there it'll be episode five and we're about ready to get into a big battle and uh my character william just got his devil fruit last time so we'll see how that goes oh it's going to be a blast i also just discovered that there's a one piece uh, D and D, like the One Piece D and D uh, wiki, like like based on what we're doing. I just did, like Rustage sent me an email over that like a couple days ago. Like, there's a wiki about us. I'm like, holy crap, that's no one you yet. You hit the big time when you got your own wiki. So I'll leave a link to that below too. All right. So um, couple of things uh, before we dive into the new kind of DLC One Piece Isekai. I kind of worked out some bugs, added some new things. You know, this is the new or improved version. This is version 1.1. So we'll, we'll work it out from here. I don't know how many more of these episodes I'm going to make, but we'll keep it up as far as um, yeah, I'm having fun with it, right? But another big reason I loved making the last one is just reading the comments and the interaction that people had with the One Piece world. It was fantastic, okay? Many of them were just funny from like, oh, I got sent into the One Piece world wearing pajamas or a bathrobe. A couple people were apparently naked when they were watching my video too. Like, I was watching you in the shower with my, like, waterproof Bluetooth speaker or whatever. That counts. I'm like, yeah. People that have already watched watch the last video, by the way, they're probably already getting ready for this, because last time it was like anything that you're wearing and you're like in the immediate vicinity, you can take with you into the One Piece world, so this time you're probably like, oh, before I even click on this isekai video, I'm gonna have like, freaking baseball bat, medical survival kit, you know, a giant thing of water, I'm, I'm ready to go, teching, bring it on, you know, like, click on the video. Alright, but a lot of other people, like, um, e even if you got sent to somewhere in the world that wasn't very prominent, that was something I was worried about, because just pulling up the reference table, like, I have them all off to my side here, like, the West Blue, you got the Elusia Kingdom, which has never been shown, the Toroa Kingdom, Lost Camp is another place, in the Kano Country, probably in the West Blue, uh, Kano is probably the most, like, fleshed out region in the world, so I kind of felt bad for people that ended up in Elusia, or in the South Blue, if you ended up in, like, uh, um, even, like, the Torino Kingdom, where Chopper ended up, because it's just, like, a, a prehistoric island sort of thing filled with giant birds but you know like I was kind of impressed because a lot of people did not just adhere to like I want to be part of the One Piece plot a lot of them were like oh I ended up on Karate Island in the South Blue okay well I'll go to a dojo and learn martial arts and karate and I'll focus my life on that you know a lot of people weren't even interested in getting involved with the Straw Hats I mean some of them a lot of people were a lot of people were like yay I ended up in Water 7 and it's you know before the Straw Hats arrive at Water 7 so that means I get to hang out in the city maybe learn from Galley Law, become a carpenter or something, and then by the time the Straw Hats show up, maybe I can enlist to become part of their crew. We got a lot of people like that, but I was really impressed. A lot of people...
Like, hey, I want to be a Marine. I want to try to be a revolutionary. So I ended up somewhere in the North Blue. I ended up on freaking, you know, Rubeck Island in the North Blue. I'm going to make it my primary goal to seek out the Revolutionary Army and join them. Uh, I might cross paths with the Straw Hats at some point, but that's not, like, my main goal. So I really love that. I really felt like making these reference tables, like, if you did not end up somewhere where the Straw Hats were going to land, then it wasn't going to be any fun for you. But that proved to be contrary. I also loved all the things that people brought in from the other world because the rule was anything within arm's length of you and uh, I noticed a lot of people bringing in either PlayStation 4 or Xbox One controllers more so than like cell phones I discovered I, my phones I put it over there but yeah like I thought I was gonna get more cell phones than I was like no I was like I ended up in the One Piece world I ended up at Orange Town wearing my bathrobe and uh, having my PS4 controllers so let's do this and a million berries in my pocket I made sure to give you at least some money to work with so you wouldn't immediately like end up in a town and then just be living under a bridge you know in poverty because that would kind of suck you know yay i'm in this fantastical world that actually sounds like a really uh like elaborate title for an isekai or something i got isekai into a magical fantasy world with dragons and fairies and wizards but i'm dirt poor so i work at a medieval equivalent of a 7-eleven and that's that's my job to kind of pay rent so i'm like you know that that wouldn't be that exciting so i made sure to give you some money um a million berry, which is a million yen, which is right around 10,000 US dollars, which, yeah, you should be good for food and, you know, getting a weapon. That was another big thing. You know, if you want to be a bounty hunter or a revolutionary or a pirate, a lot of people wanted to be pirates, uh, you're going to need some kind of weapon to protect yourself. You would probably want a weapon to protect yourself anyway in the One Piece world, right? Um, but yeah, it, it was really great. You know, people ending up at like Marine Ford, kind of like the same thing that I ended up in the Germa. I kind of say like, well, you get to pick your own path for the most part, but sometimes the path gets to pick you. So I ended up in the Germa Kingdom last time. I'm pretty much locked into joining the Germa Double Six, as it happens. Barry ended up on Mirrorball Island, so he got the party the night away with Django or whatever. Uh, but a lot of other people's like, hey, I ended up in Marineford, so I guess I'm a Marine now. Um, but then you could spin it in other ways, like maybe if you want to really be a pirate or a revolutionary, and you end up at Marineford, and you know everything you know about One Piece, maybe you could pretend to be a Marine and get in and get learn all the top secret information and defect to the revolutionary army or something like that but yeah this will be isekai part two so if you've already seen part one welcome back glad you're enjoying the series if this is the first one you're watching well i hope you enjoy it i really do all right so the first thing we're going to need is some dice i have a dice bag if you have a dice bag you can use a dice bag not everybody has a dice bag everybody should have a dice bag but not everybody does uh you can always go to google and just type in roll a d6 roll a d20 whatever you're going to need although since we are using a d100 this time i don't know if Google has an option for that, so if not, I included a link in the description to a uh, website that has a D100 option, so you can go check that out there. All the dice options are on that site. I, I think it's actually the same website I used when I was doing those My Hero Academia videos, and I had to roll the D20s for them, so go check out that in the description. I've actually upgraded my dice rolling capabilities. Instead of just rolling a dice over here and then, like, showing you this way, I actually have a camera set up uh, for the top-down view of, like, my little uh, dice bowl here, so my little dice hexagon, octagon, whatever it is, so I can show you that. that that way. Um, let's go over the rules again. The premise is still the same. You're just chilling out whenever the Isekai Fairy, ping, just pops into existence and is going to send you into the One Piece world proper. Now, we've already established this. The Isekai Fairy takes the appearance of whatever you view to be the most hottest thing in the world. So, if you're into guys, super hot guy. You're into girls, super hot girl. If you're into sharks, it is the most attractive shark you've ever seen in your life. However, I am going to be adding a little bit of a modification with the DLC. Uh, the Isekai Fairy now, no matter whatever form it takes, uh, whether it be shark, human, truck, or brick has uh, a set of bunny ears now. Now that's that. Hey, listen, I had some pushback from that originally. I didn't really feel comfortable with that. Barry was the one that was really pushing for it, and he's kind of a shared in this whole project, so we went with it. So the Isekai Fairy now has bunny ears, but aside from that, takes the appearance of whatever you find the most attractive. Now the Isekai Fairy this time around is a little bit more understanding of your predicament. Last time the Isekai Fairy, while attractive, was was kind of a uh, kind of a douchebag. Back, you know, just kind of arrives and just like, hey, you're going into the One Piece world. Ping! And it's like, wait, what? And you only had what you were wearing and whatever immediately was within arm's length of you. So, wait, what? Ping! It's like, all right, I got sent into the One Piece world with a Luna Lovegood's wand from Harry Potter and a miniature tripod. 
and a million berries in my pocket, so the Isekai Fairy wasn't so mean, but... You know, what happens if I ended up in, like, a winter island, which was the case with a lot of people, because I also had, like, Drum Island on here, and, like, Minion Island and Swallow Island, which are both very, very cold climates, and I am kind of wearing a hoodie. It's honestly a little chilly here. The, we the weather around here has been, like, fluctuating like crazy. Um, but uh, even so, if I landed in the middle of the Drum Rockies wearing this, <laughs> I'm probably going to die before I could make it to town to buy some gloves and a hat or whatever. So this time, the Isekai Fairies a little bit more understanding. The Isekai Fairy is like, okay, you're going to get teleported in whatever you're wearing at the moment, but I'll also allow you to bring two sets of clothing, okay? And uh, even if you're trying to be clever and be like, well, what if I take off my pajamas? I'm like, no, 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 no. You're wearing what you're wearing, but you get to take two sets of clothes. And in this case, two sets of clothes, they can mean, you know, socks, underwear, pants, uh, shirt, jacket, gloves, hat, you know, anything that comprises, like, a whole set of clothes. Like, okay, you're bringing, you know, pants, a shirt, a jacket, a pair of gloves, a hat, earmuffs, fine. That's, that's winter apparel, that's fine. So you can bring one set of clothes that is probably, if you're, if you're, if you're smart, you would pick a set of winter clothing, and you could pick another set of clothing, whatever you want it to be. Now, I suppose you might be asking me what happens if you don't have winter clothing, because maybe you live in a really hot part of the world, you don't have winter clothing because it's never winter where you live, really, it's never cold. Well, okay, in that particular instance, the Isekai Fairy is nice enough to give you a set of winter clothing if you want winter clothing. However, it will be incredibly unfashionable. Just like however the Isekai Fairy, whatever form it takes, is based on whatever you think is the most attractive, whatever you think is the most embarrassing thing to wear, Wear, that's what the winter clothing's going to look like. All right, <laughs> so that that's what you got. It's gonna have like, let's say you're really, really not into like, um, like My Little Pony. Guess what your winter clothing's going to be? Nothing but My Little Pony winter clothing apparel. Your hat's gonna have Twilight Sparkle bouncing around. It's gonna have like a little light up function. Like you push a button and it lights up. It's like, oh god, whatever you think is the most least fashionable, that's what you're getting. All right, so uh, that just goes to show that you should always have winter clothing on standby but you get to bring two sets of clothing, all right, plus whatever you're wearing, all right, cool. And in addition to that, in, in lieu of the grab whatever is within immediate arm's length of you, that's not going to be the rule now. The rule is you can take one object that you own. You got to be very smart with this decision, though, all right? You can pick one object that you own, all right? Now... Let's say you own a car. Yeah, you could bring your car, um, but you can't bring extra gas or anything that you would need to maintain your car. You just bring your car. Nothing inside the car comes with the car. You just get the car and all of the mechanics inside of the car that allows the car to function. Anything else doesn't come with you. Uh, if you want to bring a gun... You could bring a gun, I guess. If you have bullets in the gun, they could go with it, but you can't, like, bring extra bullets with you. Um, there are guns on the reference table, so don't worry. That's why I'm adding the reference table little clause here in a second. We'll get to that, but yeah. So you get to bring two sets of clothing of your choice. If you really need winter clothing, the Isekai Fairy can provide it for you, and one object that you own, all right? And you can't, you can't like, cheat your way out of it. You can't say, well... I own my house, and that's an object. All right, fine, you bring your house, but there's nothing inside your house when it lands in the One Piece world. It's just an empty house, completely bare. I mean, the carpeting and everything is still in there, fine, whatever. I'm not going to go into super great detail, but you can't cheat the system by, I want to bring something that has, like, I want to bring this giant chest that has a bunch of survival supplies in it. And you bring the chest, but you can't bring the stuff inside of the chest. That's how we're going here, okay? Um... Any, anything that would immediately, like, you know, the, the car needs machines to function. You know, the gun, if it has bolts in it, fine. But, uh, yeah, you can't bring a bunch of, like, unrelated stuff that just happens to be inside of the other stuff. All right, we, we good with that? Okay, cool. Now, we get to the reference table. This is what I'm most proud of here, okay? There is a D100 reference table that you are going to roll on in addition to rolling wherever you end up in the One Piece world. That's still the same. And uh, there's going to be another object you're going to obtain 
through that reference table. I got like the base of this D100 off of like a D&D &D website of just random objects and I, I kept a few of them on there but I changed a bunch around as well. So some of these are like from a D&D &D table and others are from the One Piece world and then some are from our world, okay? And some, there's not very many of these but a few I took from like other anime or other like shows and video games I included on there too. There's not very many of those. Some are really good, some are really bad. In all honesty, it's probably unbalanced as all hell, but that's what makes it fun. Okay, so here is the D100. Part 1, Part 2, Part 3, and Part 4. I really debated on what I was going to make 100. I thought about making 100 a devil fruit, and then I was going to make a separate table for the devil fruits, but the problem with that was... It was just, I couldn't use Devil Fruits that already exist in the story because people already have them, you know? So I couldn't say the Bookie Bookie know me because, you know, Baby Five already has that. So that means I would have had to make a completely different reference table for Devil Fruits, custom Devil Fruits that I came up with or based off other things. And uh, I'm not saying I couldn't do that, but I just, it just, I couldn't find a way for really to make it work. So I decided to leave Devil Fruits off. Instead, I left the, if you actually do end up rolling a 100, you get a very rare instructive booklet on how to learn hockey. Um, I'm assuming in the One Piece world, there's not like, you can't just walk into a bookstore and buy, do you have any like uh, hockey for dummy, observation hockey for dummies or anything like that? Oh yeah, we just got these in, here you go. Because hockey is a thing in One Piece, a lot of people don't even know about it. But let's say there was a hockey master at one point that wrote like in his private journal, like here's how you master observation army. Here's like the basic exercises to learn hockey. And then he wrote that down and it was not like a published book. It was just something he had. Also, I don't think the world government would be happy with that being published in the world. Here's how to learn this magic skill in order to fight against Devil Fruits. Yeah, I don't think they, they, the general public would have that. I don't think the world government would allow that to be published. But um, yeah, there's this very rare book. If you do rule a D100, you get it. And the instructions are simple enough that anybody could like at least learn a basic level of hockey. All right, so that's, that's going to be the ultimate prize. But there's some other really cool stuff on there too. So last time I did this, I ended up in the Germa Kingdom. Barry ended up in Mirror Ball Island, so let's see what, what happens today. Um, for this dice roll thing here, I discovered it's the black die, the black and white ones that show up the best on this uh, little, uh, hold on, let me pull it up here. Uh, yeah, so that was a six. So wait, was that a nine? No, that was a six. That was a six. So yeah, you can see it a little bit better there, and I can also like, you know, push it up a little bit there. So that's, that's better. So we're going to use the black dice for this one. Um, so, before that happens, though, okay, Is Isekai Fer Fairy pops into my room. Wow, Isekai Fairy, you look exactly like Nico Robin, except you are wearing bunny ears for some reason. That is coincidental. Guys, I wish you could see the Isekai Fairy right here. I was like, okay, so you're going to go to the One Piece world. I'm actually prepped right now. I like, like, this is the clothing I would wear out and about. I'm not the most fashionable guy ever, but I'm wearing, I'm wearing jeans and I got uh, my hoodie here and I'm wearing a long sleeve shirt under that. I, once again, I don't think I have anything in my pockets. Damn it. I made this video. You think I'm like, I'm the one making this video. I'm the one setting the rules. You think I would throw some stuff in my pockets before I do this. But anyway, all right. I live in freaking Western PA. Winters up here get pretty rough. So I already have uh, a boatload of winter clothing. I have like super thermal socks and uh, warm underwear and uh, like a park thing and a super warm hat and earmuffs and you know thick insulated gloves so I'll take that stuff with me that counts that's all one single wardrobe I'll take that and uh, I guess I'll also take like a pair of shorts you know pair of shorts and a shirt keep in mind you can also buy stuff in the One Piece world the One Piece world has clothing stores that are like modern clothing you saw how like how like the straw hats dress I mean some of them are a little bit more eccentric than others but they have like pretty much normal clothing that you could find in our world so don't don't freak out too much about clothing like oh my god I need to pack pajamas like if you really want pajamas, you could buy pajamas. I think survival is like the immediate concern, like having warm enough clothing. But yeah, you can buy pajamas and stuff like that there. Um, so right. Also, on that D100 table, uh, when we get to it, a few of the items, I also included the amount of money that they are worth. Not every single item I did. Some items are like really simple. So that's going to be up to your bargaining skills. If you think you're up to it, you can get something off the D100 table if you're trying to sell it and it doesn't have a berry value. Um, you can try to sell it. Maybe you'll get lucky. That really just depends on where you're at. But a lot of the stuff on there I included like, you know, okay, this, you go into a, like a weapon store with this kind of weapon on the table and they will give you, um, automatically they'll give 
give you this much. They could give you more. You could haggle, but you know that you could bargain and we'll see what happens. But yeah, that's like basic for a lot of the items on the table is like how much value they are worth. Okay, on top of the million berries you already have. Okay, so that, that's the clothing I'm going to take, and I get to bring one object that I own. I do not own Barry. I, I simply do not own Barry. Um, oh crap, what do I? Oh, uh, shit. All right. Um, one thing that I own here, uh, I'm not bringing my car because that's, I mean, yay, I get a car in the one piece. Knowing my luck, I'll end up in the middle of like a desert island, like Alabasta, like my car. Yeah, my Pontiac G6 just pff, lands in the middle of a desert. Shit. Well, that makes it completely useless. Uh, my laptop, that's probably not going to go too well. Actually, you know what I do have? I don't know if it's up here, but I do own... Hold on. Uh, yeah, it's up here. Yep. I own uh, this. I have just a very basic essential survival manual uh, that I bought on sale at like a Barnes & Noble. And uh, I think I'll probably bring this with me for practicality purposes. Um, yeah, that'll be good because the odds are... I think in my favor, I will end up at an island that at least has a town, <laughs> you know? Uh, but it could happen. You could end up in a winterland. You could end up somewhere like that. Like, worst case scenario, um, I'm not really confident in my abilities to start a fire just based off my memory. So it would probably be nice to have a survival booklet. Like, if I end up in the middle of the North Blue in an island that's a winter island, at least I have winter clothing and, like, a way to start a fire. Uh, and make a raft. That Actually, that's in here too, and that would be incredibly useful in the One Piece world, which is mostly comprised of water. So, yeah. This also has, like, first aid tips, and mushrooms and things that will kill you, and not kill you, and how to light a fire, and various ways to cook things on a fire. Yeah, water rationing, things that you definitely need for your body. You know, things like that, and, and things to avoid. Um, I'm gonna roll with that. I'm gonna take this little survival booklet, okay? Hoping, hopefully that I won't need it. Hoping that I will land somewhere with a town that I could just buy the basic necessities from there, okay? And if, I, if I need a weapon or something, I'll just find a pointy stick, you know? A pointy stick, hey, man started with a pointy stick, we'll be okay with just a pointy stick, okay? So now I need to decide where I'm going to end up in the One Piece world. Let me just pull up the, uh, the D6 reference table there. Okay, and I need a D6 for and I think I have all the other... No, nah, D20. That's kind of important. Do I have a percentile dice for this? No. Okay, we're going to have to roll another one for the percentile for the D100 list. Okay, so uh, that's what I'm taking. Two pairs of clothing and a survival book. And uh, hopefully that'll be good and I get lucky. Okay, here we go. Roll a D6 to determine which area in the world I'm going to end up. Last time I wanted to end up in the New World, but then I ended up being a member of the German Double Six, like this evil organization bent on taking over the North. So hopefully I luck out better this time. Here we go. Three. All right, that's the East Blue. All right, good, 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 good. We're, we're set. All right, now go over to this reference table. And uh, the East Blue got a lot of different options in the East Blue. This is going to be fun. Uh, yeah, see, Barry, I'm not going to, I'm going to have my happy ending here. A lot of other people were like, where's my D12? Yeah, that's my D12. A lot of other people were like, uh, perfectly happy living as uh, normal civilians. Like, I'm not going to be a revolutionary. I'm not going to be a pirate. I'm not going to be a Marine. I'm just going to chill out in the East, you know, living in, like, Sear Village or Logtown or somewhere and just try to stay out of the way of pirates, and I think I should be good. I'm like, honestly, that's that's understandable. It's like, you get to live in the One Piece world. You get to actually witness all this events and stuff happen. Like, you know, you can watch it on the, the Den Den Mushy news. Like, today, Marine Ford happened to be like, whoa, that's so crazy. At least I knew that was going to happen in the world, and you could still make money off of it, like betting on, like, the outcome of the war. I'm sure there's some gambling houses that would accept bets like that, and you would win a lot of money. So, I bet that uh, Whitebeard loses, but the Marines also get defeated because Blackbeard shows up at the last minute to double-cross everybody. Oh, that's a very specific bet, but okay. All right, so D12 for the East Blue. Let's go. Six. Sierra Village! I end up in Usopp's hometown right before Luffy shows up. Probably like a couple weeks before Luffy and Nami and Zoro arrive at uh, uh, the Gecko Islands at Sierra Village. I'm also hanging out there. I just ping into existence a couple of weeks prior to Usopp meeting them and I land in the middle of the village. That would actually be really cool because I could see myself palling around with Usopp. Usopp is like the one of the straw hats that, you know, Frankie, I love Frankie. He's kind of out there though and I would love to hang out with him, but I can understand he might alienate some people. Um, 
Um, you know, and Zoro, you kind of just don't want to piss off. But so yeah, it'd be like you approach Usopp, be like, hey, I'm new to the village. How you doing, man? Oh, I'm good. Where are you from? Oh, you know, I'm from over the other Gecko Islands, y three or four towns over. Anyway, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you too, man. Everyone in this village kind of hates me. It's nice to make a new friend. I'm like, yeah, how you doing? I'm Matt. <laughs> you know, and hey, hey, actually, that's the best place. Awesome. Because it's like, I either have a choice. I could, you know, decide to travel with the Straw Hats when the time comes. Oh my god, I should- a lot of people that also ended up in Syrup Village, I was reading the comments, were just like, okay, the first thing I'm going to do is assassinate Kuro. And I'm like, ugh, that might be trickier than you it is. You might think it would be easier to just, like, walk up to the front door and just be like, ding dong, and be like, yes, and then just, like, shoot Kuro and then, like, call it a day. But, uh, you have to think of a few things. Number one, even if that were to have worked, like, if he literally let his guard down, that much that you just like you could just you know ping and it's over um everyone in town is going to freaking hate you and either run you out of town or lock you up because you just assassinated you just killed a, a hapless butler because everybody in town loved kuro you know even kaya so at that point so you can't just like immediately assassinate kuro that's probably not gonna be a good idea and he would probably also be aware of it and you would probably sense it coming so i don't think there's any easy way you could assassinate kuro uh you could try but you would probably like like you know you answer the door and be like oh i am the butler Clahador. Be like, oh, hi, sorry. I was just looking for directions to the port. I kind of got lost. And was like, oh, go down the road there, take a right, and you'll end up there. And like, okay, thank you very much. Mm, yes. And then as you're turning to walk away, or as the Kuro's turning to turn away, then you pull out a ha! And then before you could probably even pull the trigger, Kuro's going to appear behind you and just <laughs> snap your neck and then drop you and then be like, Mistress Kaya, this person tried to attack you. I was like, oh my god. I'm like, yes, I defended you. Don't worry, you're safe. Oh my god, he had a knife, he had a gun. I don't know what you oh, that's crazy, yeah. So, yeah, assassinating Kuro, you could try to be clever about it, but that's going to be t tougher than you said and done. So, you know, I, I wouldn't try to take on Kuro, but I would definitely try to, like, I would tell Usopp about it and be like, here's a plan, and I heard through the Grey Prime. I'll, I'll just play it off like I overheard it, you know. But we're we're not done yet. We're not done yet. That's just where I'm going to end up. We still need to roll on the D100 table. All right, and this is going to be a random object. Okay, so I don't have a percentile die in this in this kind of dice for some reason. Oh, wait, no, yeah, I do, I do, I do. Okay, okay, that was it. All right. Uh, okay, so D100 percentile and then D10. I'm a nerd if you haven't noticed. Okay, here we go. So may maybe, who knows, maybe the object that I get will allow me to assassinate Kuro immediately. Who knows, who knows? All right, let's see what we got here. We got, uh, that's 10 and 8. So we got 18. So 18, first table. I got a brass harmonica that is worth 500 belly. A brass harmonica. I was originally going to make it a gold harmonica, uh, because I was basing a lot of the stuff off this list off of stuff that I'd already, you know, like, watched from media and stuff. I was a big fan of Craig Ferguson's, uh, Late Late Show back when Craig Ferguson hosted it. And, uh, and, uh, James Cornyn does a great job, too. I, I like Craig, though, more. And, uh, he had this thing where if a guest could play a harmonica, they would win a solid gold harmonica. So that's where I got that from. But I didn't want to make it a gold harmonica, because I felt like that would be worth way more in the One Piece world, like a solid gold harmonica. That'd be worth a lot of money in the One Piece world. So it's brass. So brass harmonica, 500 barely, that's about five bucks. <laughs> so I could either sell the harmonica for five dollars, or I could keep it and... Harmonica, mouth organ, you know, that's not, I can't say I could play it well, but it's not a hard instrument to really, like, just doodle on. You're just like, you know, you could, you could screw around with it a little bit. Maybe Usopp knows how to play it. Usopp is, like, the small town kind of kid that knows how to do a bunch of random stuff. Like, he's a handyman, he knows how to handle spiders and stuff. I bet Usopp would be like, oh, man, that's a pretty cool harmonica, let me give it a try, and just... Like, he can actually play the harmonica quite well. I could see that, you know? That, that'd be actually kind of cool. So, I arrive in One Piece, in the One Piece world, with a million berry at Syrup Village in the East Blue with a brass harmonica in my pants. And, uh, you know, I would go and uh, make friends with Usopp and... Eventually, even if I don't get involved, Kuro will be defeated, and then he'll get run out of town. So it'll be a couple of weeks where I'll have to watch what I'm doing. Uh, Kuro also might be, if he sees me, he might be a little dubious, because he's a very intelligent guy. And he's also very um, duplicitous and also very cautious. He's a cat, essentially. He's the black cat pirate captain. So if he sees me just popping into existence, I don't think this outfit is a little bit 
eh, based on the One Piece world fashion, it's not too weird, just jeans and a hoodie, but he's never seen me before, so he'd be very kind of like, where did you come from? If he ever talked to me, I'd be like, uh, pulling a lie out of nowhere would not, like, I can't just say, oh, I came from that island over there. I'd have to name a real place. I'd have to be like, oh, you know, I was in, uh, Goat Island. Yeah, I came from Goat Island, but, um, you know, I decided to get out there and just see the world, but I ended up here in the Gecko Islands. I'm just touring, really. You know, I'd have to come up with some excuse like that, but then, of course, he'd be like, hmm, I see. Where's your ship? Oh, um... Well, I was on a cruise ship. Mm, I don't remember a cruise ship landing in the Gecko Islands in the last few weeks. Oh, yeah, well, it was a small cruise ship. Mm, I see, yes. Like, he's going to be cautious of me, even if I come up with a really good lie. He's still, because I'm a new face. He's going to be like, mm, yes. But I don't look that physically threatening, and all I have is a brass harmonica and a survival booklet to my name. So uh, <laughs> I don't think he's going to be all that, like, oh, I got to keep an eye out for that kid, you know, so I'll play under the radar for a little bit, maybe I'll inform Usopp of, like, what's actually happening, oh, and by the way, uh, last time when I ended up in the Germa, I was, like, all for, um, uh, I still have to roll for Barry, too, so I'll hold that up in a second, but last time when I ended up in the Germa Kingdom, I was like, oh, man, I'm gonna hit on Reiju, because Reiju's right there, right? Kaya obviously likes Usopp, Usopp obviously is in love with Kaya, so I'm not gonna get involved in that. That is their love story. If anything, I'm just gonna push more, I'm gonna, I'm gonna give Usopp some confidence. I don't know if I'd be good in that particular organization. Like, dude, no, seriously, Kaya, she's way into you. Like, I'm serious. Like, just keep talking to her. She, it's gonna work out, I guarantee it. And then I'll sneak, it's like, Kaya, oh, hey, how you doing? Nice to meet you. Yeah, this is Usopp. We go up to her window together. Yeah, I ran into my buddy Usopp here. He's great, awesome guy, super hilarious. He told me a story yesterday. I laughed my ass off. What was that story you told me last night, Usopp? I was like, oh yeah, the time I fought against a giant spider. Oh my God, it's so cool, Kaya. You need to listen to this. I'm gonna go grab some sodas. I'll be right back. You know, and then it's like I would, I would help out Usopp a hundred percent in this regard. Now, in terms of their relationship, I don't think it would get too much further along because Clahador would be watching everything. So even if like me maybe be an Usopp's wingman, I don't think it would be getting that far. But after Clahador was defeated, after Luffy and Zoro and Nami show up and defeat the Black Cat Pirates and Django and everybody, and they're off the island, and you know Kai is free, then Usopp is free to get together. With oh no. I just thought of something. If I actually did that, that would have that would have uh, severe repercussions. Um, because what if I help out Usopp? By the time Clahador, they defend the island. They defeat him. They 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 defeat Kuro. He gets off the island and everything. And then Luffy's like, "Hey, you should join our crew." What if Usopp is like, "Oh man, Luffy, I would love to join your crew. I would love to be a pirate, but..." Me and Kaya's relationship has really been blossoming, blossom, blossoming, blossoming these last few weeks, and especially because of this guy showing up. Hey, Matt, say hi. Hey, Luffy. Hey, Zoro. How you doing, Zoro? That was so cool. How you tiger trapped the hell out of those Nyanban brothers and Nami. It's nice to see you. And I would be fanboying out when I see the Straw Hats like all together. I would be like, ah, and they'd be like, okay, yeah, that's cool, buddy. You're yeah. I don't know how Luffy would respond, but Zoro and Nami would probably be like, uh huh, yeah, okay. Yeah, that's yeah okay Usopp get on the ship and Usopp's like you know what um I'm gonna decide to stay because Usopp wants to be a great pirate and a great warrior of the sea but you also have to remember Usopp's dad left his mom so he could be a pirate and let's say if Usopp and Kaya really were like boyfriend and girlfriend by the end of the fight with Kuro and everybody um maybe Usopp would be like I don't know I just we just started dating and I'm just gonna like leave to be a pirate that's exactly what my dad did and then my mom died and kaya was sick I, I think the only reason is because you know kaya helped them out and everything but they weren't really a couple but in this dimension where i help out usopp they are so this might this might have repercussions down the line where usopp decides not to join or he might be like i'll take a rain check luffy i'm gonna stay here in syrup village with my girlfriend all right fine can I come? <laughs> you know, I want to stay in the village with Usopp and Kaya, or would I want to? Because I guess Kaya would rule the village because she's like the noble of the like she or not noble, but her family had the most money, and then her parents died, and then Clahadora was you know making her sick and stuff, and so she's feeling better now, and so it would be Mary and uh, Kaya that would essentially rule the island or that little town, I guess. So I could live there, or I could continue traveling, or I could go with the Straw Hats. I would be very useful with the Straw Hats because I could tell them what they're going to expect coming up, but you also think Luffy might not even like that. Luffy would just be like, don't tell me what's going to happen, that just ruins the whole adventure. 
So I, I, I you know, honestly, I could, I could see that happening. I could see myself going up to Luffy and being like, Luffy, let me join your crew. I can tell you everything that's going to happen. I'm like, I'm a really good fortune teller or I'm psychic or I could see the future or something. And Luffy would probably just be like, nah, then the adventure would be boring. Crap, you got a point. I mean, it still would be crazy and exciting, but you would know everything that's going to happen. So if I did join, if I joined the Straw Hats, they would have a strict no spoiler policy, probably. Mm, that's going to be difficult. <laughs> that's going to be difficult to join the crew and be like, they arrive at Alabasta. Man, I wonder what's going to happen on this desert island. Shut up. I don't want to know. Damn it. <laughs> you know, like, I think I might just stay in Sierra Village. I think I might just hang out in Sierra Village and hang out there. And if Usopp decides to stay, fine. But if he decides to leave, like, still with the Straw Hats and they travel together, then I can hang out in the village I'll be the new captain of the Veggie Pirates, of the Usopp Pirates, or the Veggies, you know, I guess. <laughs> that, that doesn't sound that appealing to me. Maybe I'll, uh, maybe I'll just travel. Maybe I'll hang out in Syrup Village for a little while, and then I'll just do a little tour. I have a million berries. I'll do a little cruise ship tour of, um, of the East. I'll go to the Baratier, I'll, I'll get some stuff there, I'll save up and buy my own ship and have my own crew. I won't be a pirate, but I'll just travel the seas with some friends. That's the best I got, I guess, you know, because uh, the Straw Hats, I mean, part of the main character, so I probably won't die, but uh, yeah, I wouldn't be able to spoil anything because Luffy would probably get really mad, and um, yeah, I don't know how that dynamic would work, but I would get to, uh, I would get to see Robin. Maybe I could just hang around long enough to get to Robin, but then I can leave, and then I'm like, done, because then I'd be in the middle of the new world. Not the new world, I'd be in the middle of paradise when that happened. Oh, man, that's tough. It's like, play it safe and just stay in Syrup Village, or uh, go out there in the world, which was, at the end of the day, that was Usopp's main main decision that he had to make, right? Uh, do I want to stay in my village where it's safe, in my small town, or I want to go out there and see the world? I don't know if I want to go out there and see all the things in One Piece world, because there's so many things that could kill me. <laughs> but, um, yeah, that would be the tough decision for me. I'm kind of leaning on more of just staying in the village, to be honest with you. But, yeah, that's that's where we leave off there. But, yeah, Kuro, Kuro would be defeated regardless. Even if I kept my head down, he would still be defeated. So, that's not a big concern. But, yeah. Uh, anyway, uh, I might end up being the, the Usopp of the new village. Usopp leaves, and I end up being the new one. But anyway, let's, uh, let's rule for Barry now, and then let's call it a day for this little isekai adventure, and then you can let me know on what happens below, what's going on with you. Um, let's see, so, first thing we need... Did I throw my dice? Oh, yeah, I threw all my dice back in here. That's, I don't know why I did that. Alright, um, so, first thing here for Barry, we're gonna roll a d6. Go back here, alright, d6, where you ended up, Barry? Three, you're ending up in the east as well. All right. Last time you ended up in Mirabal Island, but where are you going to go now, buddy? D12. Ten. You're going to end up in... He rolled 11 last time, so now he rolls a 10. Uh, he ends up in Logtown. All right, so Barry's going to end up in Logtown this time. A little bit more of a dangerous place than Mirabal Island, but okay, granted, that's uh, like the hub where everyone's going to the Grand Line, so there's a lot of a lot of business to be had there anyway. You can open your own shop, I guess, and maybe work for Ipon Matsu or something. So yeah, you rolled, uh, rolled a 10. And now you're going to roll on the item table. I just rolling, I know he's a brick, but I like rolling on the item table. Well, it would be really funny if he rolled a 1, because 1 on the D100 table is just literally a brick. It's not berry, it's not a magic brick, it's just you get a brick. There you go. Alright, so percentile dice and then D10. Alright, here we go, Barry, what do you get? 30, what, is that a 7 or a 1? That's a, that's a 7. Yeah, that's, that was a 7. Okay, so 37. All right, I have to switch over to the next page here. 37, Barry gets himself a Rubik's Cubed. I misspelled that. I apologize. I meant Rubik's Cube. Not, I get Rubik's Cubed? I get cubed inside of a Rubik's Cube? No, it's just a Rubik's Cube. Unsolved. So, yeah, I actually have one down here, which is, um, it's, it's solved already, right? but I just, like, I was looking around my room. I'm like, what stuff do I have around here that I can put in the list? I'm like, okay. So, Barry... There you go, buddy. You get you land in Logtown with a million berry and a Rubik's cube. 
Which, you know, honestly, in Logtown, if there's any place for you to sell stuff, that would be it. Barry ends up becoming a successful entrepreneur. He opens up his own puzzle shop. He's like, you know, because I don't think Rubik's Cubes exist in the One Piece world. This would be a very interesting puzzle. People, this would be all the rage in Logtown. Give Barry two weeks in Logtown. He's running his own business, manufacturing these, and just like, like everyone in Logtown's like, my god, this is incredible! You know, we need to sell these all over the east! You know, give it a, a year. And I'm just living in my little village in Syrup Village in a hammock, just kind of like, eh, this isn't so bad. And then I hear about Barry, like, this is the newest, the newest invention right out of Logtown. I'm like, damn it, Barry. <laughs> anyway, so that's, uh, that's Isekai Part 2. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Uh, I don't know if I'm going to do another episode of this, but it's a lot of fun to make these. I don't know if I'm going to, I have to think of another reference table to make in some way. Maybe next time I'll do a Devil Fruit reference table. I'll figure out some way to make that work, but, um... Yeah, I don't know how many there'll be. Maybe a D20, maybe. I don't know if I could do a D100 for that, because I can't use Devil Fruits that already exist. But uh, we'll, we'll see how it goes. All right. Thanks for watching, everybody. This will be Teching 101 signing out. Later, everybody.